Christmas hamper of ham fissiness, otherwise known as Auntie's new festive bloomers. <laughs> now, forgive my somewhat unconventional entrance, but as you can see, the controller of programs and his team of hand-picked hard nuts are getting ever more desperate in their efforts to keep my hands off his bloomers. <laughs> when it comes to hard nuts, I yield to no man. Fueled by my resentment after a failed audition to be the fifth Teletubby, Gaga. <laughs> I'm here to spill the beans with an A to Z guide to Auntie BBC's newest bloomers that takes in everything from can't cook, won't cook, to men behaving badly, from Tom Jones to I'm Alan Partridge. Aha! <laughs> Actually, I'm not Alan Partridge, but I realise it's an easy mistake to make in the gloaming here. <laughs> now, of course, this is a time for families, for the kiddies, all over the country, People will be gathering together to care and share with their nearest and dearest. Take, take Walford, for example. No doubt there'd have been a big gathering around the table in the Mitchell household. Perhaps Phil pulled a cracker with Ricky. <laughs> Ricky's bound to have been there because Phil is the father's mother's stepson's wife's brother-in-law <laughs> and Ricky's wife be angry. You can't get much closer than that. Small wonder, then, that our guide begins with the BBC's biggest show and that A is for Albert Square. Did you see Joe? No. I thought you were going to see him. I have to make an appointment. Look, I'm sorry, I've got to get changed for work. No, wait, please. Oh, I feel so bad. When he needed me most, I, I think I'm down. Oh, sorry, I can't get this key out of the door. <laughs> Shopping. You can go shopping down Bridge Street any time you like. So what happens at Chantilly then? There's a guidebook. You can read. Oh. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be on my own. Oh, don't let me in. These fish and chips are getting cold. I suppose it's cold. <laughs> 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 it's the time to tell you the cobra got raided last night. Yeah, does anyone know why? Drug dealers, apparently, but I'm going to get to the bottom of it. <laughs> <laughs> Did Simon tell you the Cobra got raided last night? <laughs> <laughs> Did Simon tell you the Cobra got... <laughs> Did Simon tell you the Cobra got raided last night? Yeah, does anyone know why? Drug dealers, apparently. But I'm going to get to the full story. <laughs> <laughs> you told me to tell you the Cobra got raided last night. Yeah, does anyone know why? Drug dealers, apparently, but I'm going to get to the full story. Full <laughs> <laughs> story. That's going to be an anti-bloomers, I'm sure of it. <laughs> oh, need a hand? Oh, I'm all right, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Christmas. Happy Billy Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Who has a happy Christmas, Billy? <laughs> uh, I'm going to tell you. Because if you should ever be unfortunate enough to be in the employ of RTBBC and make a mistake like that, you have to be prepared for swift retribution from the controller's sadistic sidekicks. 
There's the branding with the BBC corporate logo. New version, of course. The electrodes attached to the sensitive parts of your blankety blank. And the ultimate horror of the water torture. Sitting through every episode of Howard's Way. <laughs> Resistance is stirring. Now and again, a handful of courageous artists fight back with heroic acts of sabotage. In our A to Z guide, B is for big breakages. It's Jim Davidson! <laughs> Actually, it's rather good. Tough luck. <laughs> and don't expect Gordon to buy you any sweets either. We don't buy friendship. Diagonally. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Now take My your fish slice. What's your knob scone? Have any girl? How do you know? We did a special test. If it kicked twice, it was a boy. Guess what? It kicked twice. He's joking. <laughs> <laughs> you don't believe this? Two of these. <laughs> do you know how to work a duster? Yes. There's one in the cupboard under the sink. It's great fun. an idiot like me tell you that getting on in the BBC is a cutthroat business. Some people will stop at nothing to climb the greasy aerial. Personally, I was sickened by the sight of grabby Gabby Roslin <laughs> buying expensive gifts for the wife and children of the controller of programmes. <laughs> little did she know that the only thing that Morticia and the children, little Attila and Lucretia, <laughs> so like their father, actually enjoy <laughs> is pulling the wings off insects. I bought them a beehive. <laughs> Come on, trawl through television's flotsam and jetsam. C is for creepy crawlies. And just in case you're thinking about doing any bamboo planting this week, now for the special long-range landward forecast, we go over to the BBC Weather Centre in London and Suzanne Childhood. <laughs> <laughs> You may recall we had Nick Faldo and Lee Westwood out on the 16th green against Jeff Maggot and Justin Leonard. Faldo and Westwood were two ahead when the American somewhat controversially called a halt of proceedings in the fading light of yesterday evening. And they resumed this morning. Both sides had putts for birdie threes. The Americans didn't make theirs, but here's Lee Westwood with a chance of European victory, three and two. If that fly doesn't get off the end of my... No. <laughs> Three and action. Well, I suppose I feel a bit better knowing that she's got her life. It has been extremely beneficial to the university unit. It gave them uh, enormous uh, international reputation. It brought them enormous financial... <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be one of those days, isn't it? He's different by size, and great Virgils of the past would be <laughs> Snow White, who had the seven dwarfs. <laughs> He's one of these three ones, because there's a sword on my head. We've had this before. <laughs> We've taken here to a place of execution and <laughs> hang by the thorax until you are dead. Ah, ah. Just uh, browsing through a secret memo detailing next year's BBC budget cuts. Apparently, there's going to be a series of 
1.4 children. <laughs> men behaving 15% less badly. <laughs> Not forgetting the return of Jim Davidson and John Virgo in not such a big break. <laughs> and Tomorrow's World will be reappearing in the slightly less expensive form of Tomorrow's Croydon. <laughs> Rest assured that even in these times of tighter belts and good husbandry, the BBC's traditions for period drama in crinolines and capes, bodices and bottles remain very much alive. Believe me, I've seen Dale Winton in his off-duty moments. <laughs> okay, okay, I exaggerate. But I have seen the bloomers. And yea, verily and forsooth, in our A to Z guide, D be for days of yore, it be, my liege. <laughs> Deep hidden in the leafy hedge that borders round the meadow's edge, hail sprightly songster of the mo. And all this while you sit, making a a a fr a fr oh. <laughs> One of his beautiful watercolors. A present for your own birthday. Oh, come on, it, it's the thick one. I don't take to your ladyship advice. But no man in England should marry me against my consent, Mr. Bliffle. <laughs> and more shame on your father. Well, you're the one that has to go to bed with Mr. Blifferl and not him. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Right, come on, on your feet. I'm putting you on the lock and key. You have no evidence. I have no need of it, as I think you shall find. Come on, get on your feet! Leave him! <laughs> Leave him! <laughs> Oh, there, sir. Off on the London road she went, sir. With the... Uh, oh, all sorts of f***ing people. Isn't it? There's no turning back now. Concerns unpredictable inanimate objects, a subject on which I feel well able to speak. I haven't interviewed enough of them in my time. <laughs> but even the catatonic guest can show more signs of life than a vehicle supplied by the BBC. Yes, linger around the concrete donut over long, and you're sure to run into engine trouble. I'm afraid you left the handbrake off. <laughs> This car, five years ago, would have been homing in on £20,000. Now, today's auction, it's estimated to make between, get ready for it, five and a half and seven and a half. Rolling down the f***ing hill. Could you please tell me how long double-decker buses can go around corners when they're shaped like a rectangle? Hmm. Well, as you can see... Um... <laughs> Learn a driver. Sorry. <laughs> Um, you know, but there's a couple of general points to make about equipment anyway. Yeah. I mean, any machine which is used, you need just to have a look at 
the potential source of accidents. Things like, you know, is there a good mounting step yet? Yeah. You know. <laughs> if I crash a milk float, I'll never live it down. I mean, never. come across a bold new venture called BBC News 24, giving you the news when you want it, or indeed, whether you want it <laughs> or not. It's one of the BBC's new digital services, but even I, spiller of secrets though I may be, hesitate to fill you in about this new technology, largely because I don't understand the first thing about it. <laughs> but I'm strictly a valves man myself. Bring back the days of the wobbly pictures and waiting for the set to warm up. I say. I'm sure you'll be wanting to invest in the new kit so that you can snap up round-the-clock reports from Auntie's top team. Because the BBC is always first with the news. the Conservative Party chairman, Brian Mawinney, accused Labour of grubbing for votes with the leak and called for an immediate inquiry. Is that one all right? <laughs> <laughs> Helen was lucky. At least she now has the chance of a new life. But there are 250 other people on the waiting list for this operation, some of them children, all of them desperately ill there's an acute shortage of donor organs. Doctors... Oh. Yeah. Well, joining us now from Manchester... Okay. Where were we going? Well, we, we should be going to uh, Manchester now, I think. No, but perhaps not. Time now for the BBC Big Board. He knows which camera to I know which one it is. Peter, thanks very much indeed. And it's been quite a day on the market. Well, let's this camera. Let's look to this one. It's been quite a day on the market. First to have you with us. First to have you with us. Sorry about that. But the Dow Jones set the tape. Now. Uh, in fact, I think we're going to have a report, are we, from Peter Biles on the, uh, the O.J. Simpson trial. A civil jury in Santa Monica uh, has... Uh, I'm sorry, that doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> um, I'm Alistair Yates. Join me and Tamon Nabili for BBC News Desk. What? Desk. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> Hello, I'm Alistair Yates. Join me and... <laughs> What's the matter with me? Hello, I'm Alistair Yates. Join me and Tamon Nabili for BBC News Desk. Voting has ended in local elections in Bosnia... I'll see you later. <laughs> uh, you'll sympathise with the unfortunate Alistair Yates there. You can't help but feel sorry when someone is left in front of the camera never knowing what's going on behind you. Take this horrific example. When Alistair was reading a story about the retirement of everybody's favourite Yorkshireman, cricket umpire Harold Dicky Bird. Imagine it. Up goes the editor's cry. We need a Dicky Bird picture. And this is the result. <laughs> One of international cricket's best known and best loved umpires is preparing to hang up his hat for the last time. Harold Bird, known to all cricket fans as Dickie Bird, will make his last appearance at the second Cornhill test between England and India. In the same vein, see if you can spot the not so deliberate mistake in this scene from that stirring tale of Normans and Saxons in the 11th century. Ivanhoe! But perhaps the most terrifying example of all comes from that intense and chilling murder story, The Ice House.
No surprises, then, that the shelves of this mausoleum of mistakes are positively groaning with cases where BBC employees have been reduced to gibbering wrecks. Your bourgeois middle-aged man is convinced the workmen are cheating on him. He climbs the ladder to check. Chris had a good figure for heads and a good head for... Fi oh. How long did you say you'd been there today? Oh, since lunchtime. Oh, my God. What's that? Look, you've finished with this now, haven't you? No! Look, uh, well, I, I'll take it away anyway. I think it's best. Better? We need to just... Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> Don't say from the top again, please! <laughs> Bobby? Yeah. Can you wake up row D? Yes, hurry along, Mr. Skinner. Our special train will be here shortly. And when it arrives, I want you to load those beverages onto the... Come on, come on, come on! Aye, aye. It's Batman. <laughs> Lovely weather for ducks. I, 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 was, I was slightly... Not spurious. <laughs> dubious. <Yeah>. Dubious. <laughs> it was a famous film star like a really glamorous one like um jane russell jane russell yes and she came up close to you and said oh <laughs> <laughs> 13 pounds, 14 shillings and sixpence. I have the vicar sitting next to me. At least I think it's him. There's a man sitting next to me in an iron mask. An iron mask? <laughs> you know, I haven't seen anyone in that kind of state since the night we won the Eurovision. The controller of programmes realised he'd have to pay for it the next time round. <laughs> Poor old Scrote, a man who combines the easy charm of Hannibal Lecter with the good looks of Jabba the Hot. <laughs> He's absolutely speechless. Glory be. When he has the power of speech, he can bring you up, intimidate you into taking a job, and before you know it, you're standing in a television studio wearing a frilly shirt and a bewildered expression, saying, Next, Home Counties North will be showing us their cha-cha-cha. <laughs> I was that soldier. So if the phone rings around here... Whatever you do, don't answer it. It's your gun, isn't it? Overton. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Phone's for you. <laughs> Overton, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oi! There's a phone call for you. Daddy? <laughs> Overton. Yeah, 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 hold on. Wait. There's a phone call for you. Daddy? <laughs> Sorry, my fault. There's a phone call for you. Wait, there's a phone call for you. Daddy. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with that, bro. There's a phone call for you. Daddy. Hello? wondering is the ceremonial BBC sign used on special occasions to cut uppity artists down to size. Of course, such special occasions arise only when the ceremonial BBC guillotine is fully booked. As I am in the ways of the rustic and the bog man, you'll not be surprised to find me here in a section of this BBC bunker reserved for disastrous moments when our stars and presenters have ventured out into the great outdoors or ITV as we know it. 
<laughs> That's not fair. Our business here is to take a bold step into the countryside. But mind where you're putting your feet. <laughs> Bored and listless. Kept in in the winter, nothing to do. Practical tip number 17. Give them a beach ball. <laughs> Hello there. Meet my mate Arnie. He is six foot four. I'm five foot three and a half, just to put that into perspective. He's one big Italian ox and just one of the many animals here at the Fairy Farm Country Park. It's next to an absolutely beautiful stretch of the River Trent, just outside the Nottinghamshire village of Coburnham. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of Britain's newest cash crops, willow. And what's really exciting about it is that with the aid of a little technology, this could be made to power this. Please yourself. <laughs> now, you might think that this program is all about belittling the hapless saps forced by dire necessity and an enormous tax demand to work for the BBC. Look how wrong you are, because I am happy, nay proud. To salute a man who cleaves to his professionalism like the white line sticking to the middle of the road. A man of action, a hero of our times, who in his forthcoming series, Extreme Machines, so that beneath that macho, high-energy exterior lies someone who can cock it up like the best of us. <laughs> As we accelerate through our A to Z guide, we find that J is for... Jeremy. Well, what a day's hunting. Here. And have your enormous browning cannon back. We managed to not see a deer. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I can't get out. <laughs> but an enormous amount of money isn't enough. Colossal horsepower isn't enough. Water, as I'm sure you'll no doubt have noticed if you've ever tried to wade through it, is sticky stuff. It slows you right down. Enormous amount of money isn't enough. Colossal horsepower isn't enough. Water, you see, is sticky stuff. <laughs> I'm enjoying it so much, I'm going to take several takes. <laughs> but an enormous amount of money isn't enough. Colossal horsepower isn't enough. Water, as I'm no... <laughs> but an enormous amount of money isn't enough. Colossal horsepower. <laughs> you see, as I'm sure you've no doubt noticed, if you've ever tried to wade anywhere in it, it's sticky stuff. It slows you right down. If you put a 2,000 horsepower engine in a car, you'll go hundreds of miles an hour. But ask 2,000 horsepower to push a hull at 50... Oh, but an enormous amount of money isn't enough. Horsepower <laughs> isn't enough. It's going to be really quite sticky. Horsepower <laughs> isn't enough. Sorry, this is just getting really sticky down here for some reason. <laughs> Ask a 2,000 horsepower engine to push a 50 foot hull through this stuff. Well, your top speed will be 50. Tops. <laughs> it's actually a very simple device. <laughs> You've got these handlebars that turn skis and an engine, and it drives a sort of tank track at the back. I'll just do that again. <laughs> oh, now, touch, touch. 
And you will be aware, of course, that I'm a man who keeps his finger on the pulse of broadcasting. I was a keen, if somewhat bemused, viewer of the racy goings-on in this life, for example. <laughs> keen, because it was racy, bemused, because I didn't think Esther Ranson knew about that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, my point is this. You have to keep the mince pies peeled around here. Otherwise, as I discovered to my cost on Children in Need Night, Gabby Roslin nicks your trousers. <laughs> I wouldn't mind. But what good is someone with a 32-inch waist to her? <laughs> a further reminder that three weeks tomorrow, we reveal the identity of your choice of the BBC Sports Personality of the Year. It'll possibly come, probably come, from a short list like this. Like um, young Otis um, Gibson, the fast bowler, he plays with Morgan. So I think it would be something useful. How's that going to change the attack? <laughs> Action! Well, this is a start. You wouldn't. I'm staying on in Newcastle. Flora! <laughs> <laughs> I'll take you now into the hothouse that is the, the kitchen where Franco is preparing meals for uh, this evening's diners. And, uh, whoops. <laughs> I'm going to miss him, Miss Fritz. Me too. One they are following up. It's a sighting on Tuesday night of what looked like... <laughs> BBC is a great one for catchphrases. This is the corporation that gave the world sleep well and don't have nightmares. <laughs> Whoever thought of that one can never have worked for BBC Light Entertainment with its ringing motto, Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. Despite that. You do hear laughter rolling around the hallowed portals of the concrete donut, usually when the controller of programmes is assessing another of my plaintive applications to take over as voice of the balls. <laughs> I don't mind telling you, it hurts. Laugh? I could have cried. Yes? Is everything all right, Mr Partridge? You heard a bit of commotion. Oh, no, it's fine. Oh, right, um... You know, you've got chocolate in your face. <laughs> uh, sorry to bother you, Mr. Partridge, but I heard a bit of commotion. Everything all right? Oh, this is fine. Oh, right. Uh, <laughs> do you know you've got chocolate in your face? <laughs> uh, I heard a bit of commotion. Is everything all right? <laughs> I am going to give you a nice sponge bath. Uh, no. Yes, yes, come on, whoops a daisy. Oh, it's going to be a long evening. Quickly. You must rue the net. <laughs> Up to half a million people in Hertfordshire, excuse me, Hertfordshire and North London are being advised to blow their water. Excuse me. I have to leave that story. Well, in my dream, this is good. Starving now. Absolutely starving. I've got a couple of munches if you want them. No, thank you. <laughs> Take me longer to get it. <laughs> Jenny, how is she? at home. I won't have Mum taken away. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> prepare yourselves for a revelation. I'm about to reveal the BBC's most up-to-the-minute and sophisticated addition to the equipment in its weather centre. <laughs> As I thought, there seems to be a depression descending over our weathermen and women.
brought on, doubtless, by the chill wind of realisation that I'm about to expose their areas of low competence to you, the licence fee payer. <laughs> our A to Z guide, M is for meteorology. I couldn't say remember to put the right teeth in. <laughs> if only they were mine. <laughs> well, we shouldn't have any technical problems with the weather tomorrow night. It's looking fairly good. <laughs> so, uh, good morning to today, then. Good morning once again. A fine, dry and sunny start across... That shouldn't happen. Hello, she's taking it again. Look, she's back again. Let me tell her. Oh, you listen to her. Go on, Suzanne, take it away. <laughs> Never mind. It's going it's to be dry and sunny in the south, isn't it, Suzanne? Do be careful tonight. Tim. Well, it's Gargi, actually. <laughs> but it's quite a lot of sunshine around, too, but a little bit more in the way of Patrick Cloud than we have become used to. I've got your name and I've got your name. <laughs> I hope her parents are somewhere near. Your name. <laughs> you learn lessons when you've been locked in auntie's embrace for a good few years. Like, don't tackle the canteen food with plastic cutlery. <laughs> An unequal struggle if there ever was one. Never eat anything your listeners send you. <laughs> for those who lack my live agility, cat like speed, and superior cunning, there really is no way out of here. <laughs> Get out and hail Crossing Keeper, who will open the level crossing gates. <laughs> Sorry about that, madam, oh, sir. But well, you know these types. Oh, I'm out! Us, not to mention the controller's most feared henchman, always assuming she's not too busy hosting a question of sport. <laughs> I must be away. Well, there's, there's an irony. Never fear, I'll simply cut my way out with a laser beam included in my crackerjack pencil. Where did I put it? You can't win them all. And those winter bloomies will be reading and waiting here on BBC One on Monday evening at 8.30.